recorder here. Welcome to uh, First Unitarian Church. I, uh, this is our weekly Pauhana. Uh, we kind of keep it kind of loose here. Uh, but if you have any uh, questions or anything like that, you go ahead and put them in the chat uh, directly to me would be best. And uh, we have a very special night tonight. The acclaimed and, uh, and wonderful <laughs> and historically uh, significant and remarkable Dennis Grau. Uh, oh, is uh, is with us wait, today. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> to share uh, some of his uh, his tunes with us, and also uh, maybe uh, some some of his stories about some of these tunes and things that sure. uh, that he's gotten up to. Um, and so, yeah, I want to you know welcome Dennis and see if you have a, a kickoff number for us you want to get us started I do and I want to make sure that you know just in case that everybody's got their um uh thumb on the volume okay uh because we <laughs> because this is a song that we used to open up with and I would love to share it with you right now Night 
you go. There you nice, go. Nice opening. When you thank you so much, Dennis. Um, You're welcome. Yeah, that's like a, a few songs together. Now, when you said we used to open with that, who uh, is that at your... the church? I think it was oh. with uh, you know was uh, I think was it before Jonathan? Maybe it was at the beginning of Jonathan. Jonifer. Yeah. I mean Jonifer. Excuse me. Yeah. I should say Reverend Jonifer. You should. Yes. Yes. Just to... <laughs> I've Good. got to be polite here. Yeah. Well, it is, it is Pauhana. It's a little, it's a little relaxed. Um, and uh, yeah, that's wonderful. Um, yeah. One of the things uh, I was kind of curious about myself is, you know, when did you start, when did you start, what was your first instrument? Was it piano? And when did you start playing? It was piano. And uh, I had a teacher, uh, I had a teacher here, um, what was her name though? I it was when I was a kid. I moved up and had then had one from La Cañada when I was in the mainland. Uh, her name was uh, Dr. Thornton. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I always did that. But I mean, <clears throat> I really loved the fact that when I was going to school, we had a band, you know, band departments in, in, uh, I didn't go to middle school. I went to, uh, junior high, but junior high, high school, I think it's really important for the kids to have, uh, you know, free rental on musical instruments. If they, if they, you know what I mean? So if you, if you know the, the kid is talented, the parents are going to buy him an instrument probably, because he's, you know, really good on it. But I mean, it's the kids have to find out first, I think, you know, what instrument they would excel on. And, um, uh, and I know we've, you know, I know all of us really don't, I mean, there, the arts program sh could be so much better in the schools. Yeah. Um, but that's one of the things I think that really helped. And then, uh, Ended up, you know, playing in school, doing talent shows with a drummer who had uh, black light and he had these streamers on his uh, uh, timpani sticks, even though he was playing drums and they were fly all over the place. And uh, we won most of the talent show contests. And that and was here? I, you were at the high school here? No, no, in the mainland. That was on the mainland. Okay. Yeah, that was in the yeah. mainland. That was in uh, South Pasadena. Okay. California. And um, and then I I ended up playing jazz uh, with uh, gosh uh, one of the groups I was the only white guy in the group and uh, it was phenomenal and we got along so well back then I mean we got along like you know there was none of this stuff going on now and um, dear friends of mine still you know but. Uh, first it was jazz and then I don't even know how I made the transition to more like rock. I think it was gigs because we had more gigs in Hollywood, uh, by playing, uh, rock. Um, and to be real honest, um, when I started, I was Mick Jagger with the tambourine. I wasn't even playing keyboards. Ah, you're in, uh, incidental <laughs> percussion. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the yeah. front guy and the front yeah. guy. And you were yeah. singing. Yeah. Ah, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that group ended up, we ended up going to Las Vegas and playing, uh, playing with the doors, warming wow. up the doors and at the Las Vegas wow. convention center. How long were you with that group? Oh gosh, I guess till 60, uh, 69, I think I, I went to, um, I went to Guatemala for nine months after high school and then came back and went to junior college. And I think it was one of the best, uh, music departments in the whole state of California for, ju for, uh, junior, uh, oh, yeah. colleges, Pasadena yeah. city college, excellent yeah. music department. Um, I had a, I had a question here from a, a Pasadena resident. Oh, uh, did you know his? Uh, did you know Dave's Muir classmates, Bill Yaryan, Bobby Hutcherson, or Nat Brown? Did you ever cross their paths in Pasadena? Um, gosh, I, if I did, I don't remember. But you okay. know what's funny is that David Davis went to um, John Muir, which is right up the street from where I went to high school. 
Yeah, that's the that was who asked the question. Judd, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, is that did he yeah, ask yeah. the question? Oh, yeah, yeah no, <laughs> maybe one of them. Um, uh, Bill Yarian, Bobby Hutcherson, or Nat Brown. Bobby Hutcherson sounds familiar, yeah. but I'm I'm not sure. You know. Okay. He's famous, Dennis. Even I know him. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby Hutcherson. And Bill Yarian, I think, wrote a jazz column for the local newspaper. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The other guy that came in that showed up at my little concert for the, the to fund the uh, high school um, is John Munford. And he's he's a famous banjo player. Yeah, sure. You know, um, and he went to South Pasadena, too. John, John did. So, um, yeah. Wow, a lot of going, lots of stuff going on in Pasadena. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's a big, there's a big UU church in Pasadena, neighborhood, neighborhood. That UU. I've never been to. Yeah, my friend Lissa it's, was there for a while, but she's in Long Beach now. So. See, growing up, I was uh, a Christian Scientist. Oh really? And yes, and um, it was kind of from the grandmother, the uh, the uh, matriarch, mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, <clears throat> the funny thing is, is that I did get up to obtain the <laughs> status of the second organ player, but I never got a chance to play because the first guy was never sick. Never sick. Yep. Never sick. So Organists, I, they know better. Never let your never let your replacement play if you want to keep your job for long. <laughs> that's that's yeah. right. And the yeah. weird thing too is that you know on those pipe organs some of them um if you're playing bach or something i mean you're you're hearing the tone like a, a half a second later no and it's that just drove me crazy i mean yeah. I, you know i want it to sound when, it, when i'm playing it you know what i mean yeah. but anyway um uh some some new to... pipe organs will do that but yeah you have to build it in you almost build in the rhythm of the distance between in your ear between your thumb or your finger hitting the whatever they call it the control or they call it something different than the keyboard um and and then the sound coming out you almost have to factor it in if you're playing fast yeah, yeah. i dated an organist <laughs> no i'm just kidding uh oh, he'd tell me all this dorky stuff and i was like <laughs> just give me a piano i don't i don't want to hear about it uh we used to have a couple of guys over here that did really good uh organ repair work and and stuff like that um they were a a couple mm -hmm. um god i can't think of their names though l l something yeah anyway. well good well let's uh we're gonna take little breaks and hear a little bit i'm i'm curious about the the christian science thing just because in a okay. way they're they're kind of the uu they're kind of they're not really uu cousins they're more like uu family friends because they're also a very American uh, uh, religion, you know, founded in America by Mary Baker Eddy. Right. And they're also based in Boston. So the main like uh, Christian science uh, thing is, in, is just a few, not even, I think it's just two miles away from the main UUA area. So they're, we actually are kind of like, we're like people that like we're friends in high school. We like have a lot in common, but we're not related. So, yeah. So. Uh, well, cool. Uh, do you want to play yeah. something else? Sure. Um, <clears throat> a while back, um, we did a musical at HPU. And um, where is that doggone thing? And um, it was, um, I'd, li I'd really like to send this. I mean, I like to put if you laugh or you smile, you're supposed to live longer, supposedly. And I like to do, I like to do that rather than being bummed and frowning all the time. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So um, this was a song that where I wrote the music, uh, Becky's mom's ex-husband wrote the lyrics. <laughs> and... <laughs> And uh, it, it was it's it was about a it was a nice a cute musical about uh, a bar in West Texas, and I'd okay. like to send this out really to all the Texans who are still suffering, you know, and um, through their or ordeal. We were 
normal as a family can be, me and my wife and daughter Emily, we had a cat, a dog, and a no account parakeet. Got me a job in a different town. We shopped around and bought real cheap next door to a power plant. Nuclear, that is. The realtor said it was safe, you see. A government man said, I agree. Well, own dear mother lives right on down the street. How oh, nice. It wasn't long we began to change. The animals started acting strange, and Emily grew a foot in about three weeks. No matter what the experts say, it started to happen on that day that we moved next door to that crazy power plant. The old tomcat now barks like a beagle, the dog ruins his life like an eagle, the parakeet just sits around and chants. My wife and I both glow in the dark, my nine-foot daughter thinks it's a lark, so we move next door to that nuclear power plant. Well, just when things were looking grim, the offers started coming in, and reporters began calling night and day. An agent man said, sign with me, I'll have you starring on TV, and soon he booked us on the Geraldo show. Me and the wife stood all aglow as our nine-foot daughter stole the show, putting all of our weird pets through their paces. The old tomcat barked on cue. The dog took off the way he flew, and the parakeet taught Geraldo how to chant. The government man said it isn't so, but me and the wife, we both know that it's all because of that golden power plant. Three years later, me and the spouse, we're still shining like a lighthouse, but otherwise we're as healthy as can be. Emily now plays basketball. She's the only pro who's nine feet tall and averages a hundred points a game. The Tomcat does commercials now, selling some kind of puppy chow, showing off and barking up a storm. The dog's become a movie star. Our agent said that he'd go far and last year he won an Academy Award. The parakeet to route out the list is now a TV evangelist and even cries just like Jimmy Swagger. The money's rolling out of our ears since we moved next door to that nuclear power plant. A lot of room feels the door room hangs by like an eagle. The parakeet just sits around and chants. I've been dive up low in the dark. My nine daughter takes it to Larks and move next door to that nuclear power plant. The old Tom Cat now barks like a beagle, but all you ain't fly like an eagle. There he just sits around and chants. Oh, I've been dive up low in the dark. My nine daughter takes it to Larks and move next door to that nuclear power plant. Since we moved next door to that nuclear power plant. Since we moved next door to that nuclear power plant. <laughs> okay, there you go. That's funny. <coughs> oh, cute, cute song. Yeah, the uh do you did you always write uh also kind of growing up? Did that always was that always something you were you were doing originals and stuff like that? Um, yeah, actually. Yeah. Um, the, the, the early groups I was writing a lot. Um, then I got into writing more, um, mu uh, uh, instrumentals and, uh, and then just did arrangements of stuff, you know, especially when I got over here, it was such a transition over there where you're, you're a lot more in the neighborhood now for most of the people. Um, and I don't mean the ones trained classically or anything, but, uh, is your, um, <laughs> You're, you're more in a Peter, Paul, and Agnes atmosphere. Um, and, and um, you know, uh, the wind calls Mariah. Uh, you're, you're, you're in that atmosphere a lot more than when I came over here. It was like R&B cover tunes, um, you know, in order to work, you know. Mm -hmm. And when I got over here at first, too, I mean... Um, there, you know, before the resurgence with Gabby and all the other Hawaiian folks, um, the Hawaiians were playing all the cover tunes too. They were playing the R and B and the cover tunes in Waikiki just to, just to stay afloat, just to have a job. Yeah. And uh, mu you know, musically, and 
And uh, I don't know, I was really uh, embraced by that community before, I think too, before it got real political. I mean, Israel was one of my friends. We, I used to see him a lot at the, at the venues and also at the uh, Hoku Awards, at the Ilakai and some other places. And, and it was, you know, if you were, uh, well, you know, I was, I was obviously with Nohe Lani, but I mean, um, I was her music director. So we basically, the, the Hawaiian community was just very warm, very, very nice and wonderful, you know, all the way around, you, you know. When did you come to Hawaii? I came back since I'm, I was born here, but I came back uh, in 70, okay. 1970. And, um, and was playing with a, uh, a group called Johnny's Rock Society. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? And, and that was rock and roll or R&B or what? Uh, it was R&B and cover tunes, pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, he, he got the idea of naming his group uh, after um, uh, the, the SOS Society of Seven. It was, you know, the, oh, everybody's, everybody has society in their name now. Let's put, let's, let's make a, you know, let's yeah. use that, you know. Interesting. So, yeah. And, um, and it, you know, back then it was white shoes, white pants, Aloha shirt. Everybody mm-hmm. in the group had that, you know, that's yeah. what they wore. And, uh, I mean, some still today, maybe uh, at uh, House Without a Key or whatever, one of those places. But, um, uh, and I was, like I said, I was lucky. I went from, um, you know, from getting back over here and playing with that group to doing Golden Throat, which was the the group before Nohelani went on her own. And then it was, uh, and then she went on her own. But I mean, I was so lucky. I, I played, uh, I was with the Beamers when Andy Bumatai was the warm up act. And, and that oh, was wow. when they were together at the, at the Monarch Room at the Rojo Inn Hotel. Had a small little string section, got three violins, I think, and a viola, one cello guy, and very simple arrangements um, that went to, with the Beamers stuff, you know. Yeah. And, uh, one of their and daughters then, is one of, or their one of their, I think, daughters or nieces is one of the two immigration judges in, uh, in the state, is uh, the better, the much much better one, by the way. No, if, I don't care if I offend the other one. Judge Beamer is great. Oh, <laughs> oh. compared to the other one, she's wonderful. But anyway, yeah. And then you know, I knew the mom, the mom real well. She wrote uh, Pupu Hino Hino. I mean, she's famous. You know, taught at, at uh, Kamehameha schools for years and years and years. So, she was, um, uh, you know, and they were all very warm anyway. But um, when I was um, rehearsing at Tom Moffat's for the Beamers, they were also doing a movie, uh, Endless Summer, oh, you know, sur- surf movie, and. Oh, yeah. um, um, they uh, they brought in this guy Basil Polidaris. He's a, uh, a a composer and an arranger and a writer, and he did uh, he did the whole choir and orchestra for Conan the Barbarian. Oh, okay. <laughs> which wow. is well, which is huge, yeah, because you yeah, have a huge a choir music. and a yeah. huge orchestra, you know. But um, uh, he. Uh, he he didn't he he thought vertically, and he, you know just like a a, a, a a director or or a conductor would you know and um, but incredible stuff you know and uh, anyway so we you know did that and then I was down doing uh, a song with Nohe at um, Odyssey Recording Studios, mm-hmm. which. Um, was was anyway the old days and then Henry Capono came in and he heard me so I ended up going on the road with them for their we were actually touring on their second album and ended up in Seattle recording their third album wow yeah so so I'm on that album That's I'm crazy. on Raps album too but only for sound effects and birds ah <laughs> uh, that's funny oh rap he was brilliant yeah, Henry's Henry's great. Still, uh, still getting nominated. 
you know? Oh yeah. He's, he's amazing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and, you know, when they, uh, when they were together and even by himself, I mean, he's, he's written some great songs. Yeah. Cecilio wrote some good ones too, but I mean, he, he's written some great, great, great songs. Yeah. So, I mean, pre Capenna and I was able to do Olamana in the studio too, the original Olamana before, Wow. Honani, Honani joined the group. Yeah, pre Capenna, I I almost played or recorded with everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was it was a a, a wonderful thing to me that I'm very thankful for. You yeah. know. Um and uh yeah, I mean that's I guess that's that's you know. How did but you, that, I mean, what, let's do another tune because we're already at 6.30, but if you want to play okay. something from those days or, or another tune you've got, uh, that'd be great. Well, I don't really have that one. Um, well, I was thinking about doing one for, for uh, Al and Molly. They always ask for this song and, and also because of the, uh, there are some people uh, uh, flood victims on Maui that uh, yeah. when the dam breached, you know, and so I figured I'd do uh, a, a, a Mako Wow song. That's all right. Great. If yeah, that's okay. Beautiful. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. Where am I at here? Your music, Mako Wow. Well, the children love to sing, and the music joy it brings. Everybody does their thing. Play the music up in Mako Wow. Well, the ladies love to dance, and the men they take a chance on the sweetness of romance. Everybody get together, make the sadness and sing this song now. Let's the make a rive, let's the make me chat cha cha. Let's the make a rive, let's the make me chat cha cha. Let's the make a rive, let's the make me chat cha cha. Catch it, catch it, music, my go on. Lay the kumba drum down in Lahaina Feel the rhythm down the street Play it loudly down the street And the music very sweet Play the ukulele down in Lahaina Where the ladies always sway And the men they always say What a very happy day Everybody get together They clap their hands and sing this song now Best to make a leave Best to make me cha-cha-cha Best to make a leave Best to make me cha-cha-cha Best to make a leave Best to make me cha-cha-cha Gotcha, gotcha music Maka wow Ukulele down in line Feel the rhythm, feel the beat Lay loudly down front streets And the music very sweet Play the ukulele down in line Where the ladies always sway And the men they always say What a very happy day Everybody get together And they come around and sing this song now Best to make 
Otra vez. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Yeah. All right. That's great. <coughs> um, yeah, was that the, uh that's the one that Al and Molly well Al requests all the time, usually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My parents are ballroom dancers, and I think uh, they they'd enjoy they enjoy dancing to that a lot, a little oh. cha cha. So. Oh yeah, yeah. sure. There's, and that so. so that's one of your arrangements. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that song was written by Willie K. Oh okay, nice. Yeah. Yeah. It has like a someone was mentioning a Latin beat. You know, it's got like yeah. A, it does. Is, does Hawaii like in the sense that? Um, so many cultures came to Hawaii, you know, over the last uh, 150 years. And so uh, do you feel like a lot of the influences from parts of the world are just still celebrated and still present in a lot of the music that's that's played here? I mean, how does that how does that work? So like that's got a Latin beat. It's written by someone who's Hawaiian. Like how how would different influences work in the Hawaiian uh, well, music community? Uh with the Parker ranch and with Makawao, there was a heck of a lot of Paniolos okay. and they, and that's the Portuguese really. And they brought in a lot of influence uh, from Spain and from, you know, the, the, uh, and Portugal. Mm -hmm. And, um, um, I, you know, that there, but there was, when I was in the mainland, Martin Denny and Arthur Lyman were, were Hawaiian music to so many, white people <laughs> uh -huh. you know there was <clears throat> there was sweden and there was switzerland but not very many people were aware of gabby mm -hmm. pahinui you know and uh god when he played he had so much soul i mean it, it was just incredible even steel guitar I, I i compare him with a friend of mine jerry bird and uh gabby's soul was just incredible i mean just mm -hmm. incredible anyway the way he played lap steel and steel guitar let alone uh slacky and, and and his singing just incredible you know um so before the resurgence though you still had that a lot of influence of um mm -hmm. r&b and all the cover tunes and stuff like that you know but um i don't think there's a lot of a lot of other influences besides um even the Portuguese, when they came here, though, they played uh, like late, late 1800s. The um, king brought over the Spanish to manage the cattle on the Big Island. And when the, when the Spanish left, they didn't teach the Hawaiians how to tune the guitar. Consequently, Kihualu or slack key guitar, that's how it started. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so, you know, that's, an inf that's definitely a heavy influence. Is this yeah. is the slack key, and there's so many slack key tunings now too, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, when I when I listen to songs on the radio and or or on radio, listen to me. Yeah, I've got my transistor here, uh, but you know, I listen to songs that I wanna that I wanna do. Um, I I say that, but I actually listen to the radio to listen to baseball. So I am you know I am a radio guy, but when I try to play them, it's not working, and then I'll look up the the tune and I realize it's in a whole different tuning, you know, and that they're playing the chords in a different, in a whole different way. The voicings are totally different. Um, right. And it has a really distinct feeling. Um, 
I'm not a, I'm not a slack key guitar player, so I have no idea. I mean, I could, I could figure it out, I suppose. I've just only got so many hours in the day, but yeah. Well, I, I noticed that a lot of guys uh, tune their guitars uh, half step or whole step lower. Yeah. Um, and, and then, and then slack key. You know, it could be G, it could be D, it could be C moderate. Um, there was a, a drummer um, that I worked with with the Beamer Brothers. And now I think he's the head of the uh, Polynesian show at uh, Disney World. Uh -huh. um, but he, uh, he taught, you know, he built lutes in his garage. I mean, the woodwork wow. in lutes is, you know, really demanding and it's incredible. And he could l read lute music too, which is rather hard um and uh he taught me some some uh garage old garage slack key tunings you know yeah that, that are, it's just really cool stuff yeah real nice sorry guy. we're nerding i realize we're nerding out everyone if you don't understand what we're talking about there's a standard tuning for guitars uh you know which uh, is the e spanish a, tuning basically e dgba be and uh those are the the key but it just comes from classical Spanish guitar. Uh, but right. when you start changing the tunings, you can use your fingers differently and get different sounds by changing what each chord or each, uh, each string actually sounds like. Uh, and so that is, if anyone was wondering what slack key guitar, it's also what you're talking about, Dennis, by tuning it down, the guitar, when you tune a, a string down, the guitar string gets looser. And right. so that's why there's more slack on the string. So it's called slack key guitar. So, and I, I think the original ones were probably you know open G tuning, whatever was whatever sounded nice to the uh, Hawaiian folks way back when when they were learning to play the guitar, uh, whatever sounded good, whatever you know. So open G, open D, you know, the, uh, were were some of the standards anyway. And then of course working with the Beamer Brothers, I mean they they uh, oh yeah. They were slack key masters, you know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was pretty cool. Very cool. Now, yeah. I am curious how how you went from like, did did you work at a church before or how did, how did you I just never really heard. How did you come to the first Unitarian from this from this world? That's an interesting question. <laughs> um, I took the poly. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. It was raining and it was the wrong turn. Yeah, no, yeah. Um, it, it, I'll tell you what happened was um, uh, Karen was looking for somebody and to play piano. And so um, at the time, Karen Velasic. And so um, <clears throat> pretty much I, as I remember it, and I, you know, I'm not the best at remembering, but uh, was that she had Pierre with her. Hi, Pierre. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, and then I came in uh, and, um, but, you know, and I was, I, the, I've mentioned this to Pierre and to uh, Karen. The thing that really kept me there, believe it or not, was Mike Young's sermons. Mm. And I, and, and it was different than uh, anything that the Christian science church, although you got to realize um, I had, because my grandmother was so matriarchal or whatever, uh, I had gotten away from the church for a while, for a number of years. It wasn't like a transition from one to the next, mm -hmm. but I, but when I got to, um, uh, this church, um, I, I just, I found it fascinating. I found it fascinating that they could have a spiritual service and then they have one, you know, like a like a Michio Kaku string theory uh, service. And then, you know, uh, and then uh, Mike Model's service. And then Pierre's uh, Amphioxus service. And uh, all of that I thought was interesting along with, you know, everything else. But at least, you know, definitely no dogma, none of that. Yeah. So, so that yeah, was, so what, about 10 years ago? Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever, had you ever like gone to the, sorry, I'm just getting a light. I realize it's getting very, I'm getting very dark here. Um, oh. Had you ever gone to a, 
or have you ever like worked in churches before that? I mean, other than as a second organist and stuff like that? No, no. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, but I mean, I, I, uh, uh, I don't know. I, I, I enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed coming in and, uh, and the hymns were, uh, not that hard. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think if the blue hymnal was, if the, if the teal hymnal was out yet 10 years yes. ago, I think yes. it was. Yeah. Yes. It yeah. was new. It was new. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And I was just amazed, um, at the time of, of, uh, I mean, you know, everybody's written well. Uh, one of the things, one of the, the uh, UU music things that we went to in San Diego, um, I met Carolyn McDade and a few other people, and, and they were wonderful. They were really nice. And, um, uh, but I was really fascinated with the, uh, with the writings or arrangements, I guess, of uh, um, Jim Scott and and um, our friend Fire a Commitment. Oh yeah, uh, Jason Shelton. Yeah, yeah. Jason Shelton. And, you know, he and, couldn't he couldn't play a lot of the things he wrote because he that, had a right. he had a pianist in Nashville who was on fire, and it was a way wow. it was like he was like his muse because he could write any piano part and the pianist could play it. Jason Shelton can't play Fire of Commitment. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, he can play, but not like play play. So, yeah. Well, it's a hard song and an odd time signature to learn really with the right hand and everything, you know, and yeah, I think it took me a while too. I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't well, we, sight read it off immediately. <laughs> I always, uh, I hope you don't mind, but every once in a while, my my uh, my UU music nerd friends, I will send them videos of us singing things correctly, singing the rhythms correctly. There's like a bugaboo in the UU world of not singing certain things, like in um, in Blue Boat Home. You because of the way you arrange it, we all sing the syncopation correctly. And if you go to other congregations, they don't sing the syncopation correctly. And you, you mystic nerds are like, oh my God, this congregation singing <laughs> syncopation of this song. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, the way it was written. So uh, yeah. I'm sure the composers appreciate that. So, I, I, Yeah, I guess they do. I mean, I've taken a couple of liberties. I can't throw the first stone. Yeah. <laughs> you know, as far as uh, some of those kind of arrangements on those songs, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, anyway, yeah. So Yeah. That's it's great. all good. Do you have any other, uh, have another tune for us? Sure. Um, I'm going to try this. I haven't done it in quite a while. And um, it's a song I wrote about our church. And I, I used to do it, of course, with the spirit singing backgrounds, but give it a try here. <clears throat> Come. 
Church behind, yet I don't want a Sunday special ride. Remembering all the love, equality for thee and me, and me and its spirituality. It's for me, it's where it will take me to a higher place. I want a taste, I want a case, I want a space, I want a singing place. One, two, three, blessed be your heart and love to this community with love. I'll be thinking about how I felt on that special Sunday. All the love we shared, we really cared. All we need is love to share and our community respectfully, necessarily, continually, spiritually, emotionally. Spreads our love and joy all around us. One, two, three. Bring your heart and love to this community with love. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's beautiful, Dennis. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I, I only laughed at the coffee because it's the. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's the classic. No, that everybody does. <laughs> yeah. It's the it's it's too true. It's just too true. And uh, I've, I've told this joke before, so everyone's heard it. But there's the old, you know, a teacher said, you know, on, on Monday, I want you oh. to bring something in from your your church uh, your to faith. talk about your your religion and your faith and and uh you know a christian brings in a cross and says oh this is the cross and it, it symbolizes this and and a jewish boy brings in a yarmulke and says yeah well this is shows humility between the space between me and god and and then looks at at uh at sally over there and says sally what's that and uh sally says this is a coffee pot <laughs> oh really what is that she says i'm unitarian <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's so, great <laughs> yeah um uh, yeah. I had, I was, I was also curious, when did the, the transition and how long did you play with, uh, with Don Ho? Like, when did that, when did that come about and, uh, how long did you do that? Uh, Benny Chong, who's probably one of the, now one of the best ukulele players in the world, uh, called me because he was in the elites and said, would you come in, um, and, uh, we're looking for somebody, you know. And the thing about it is, is that when they had two guys uh, leaving, they had the guy that did all the bells and whistles, strings, synthesizer, whatever, and then they had Johnny Todd, who was with Don the longest, and he he uh, was just on piano. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know, <laughs> I know, he used to get upset because his name wasn't on the marquee when Don when it said Don Ho, you know. The, the thing but anyway he, nice guy real nice guy and uh so they were looking for somebody so i when i first came in it was basically feel uh filling uh, two sets of shoes i had to do piano and then i also had to do the other things too you know the bells and whistles and or strings or one of the tunes i didn't play tonight but i mean you know we're we're close is uh 
Quiet Village, and I arranged that uh, uh, for Don's opening of his show. And we used it probably 99% of the time. Sometimes we didn't, and if he decided to change his mind, the ukulele player, Taimane, she used to either... Um, Usually she would end the show, but sometimes she'd she'd start the show, and then Bumatai, man, he was hilarious. You know, he was really funny back then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, so I was with Don from two thousand two thousand and one up until about two thousand six. Oh wow! So a while. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a few yeah. years. Oh, yeah, I went on the road with him, too. I mean, you know, we had, uh, <clears throat> we got stopped at the border to go into Canada at Niagara Falls. And, uh, God, when everybody found out that Don Ho was on the bus, I mean, they were just like, you know, go ahead, do anything you want. And the only reason that we had to go into Canada was to have fish and chips because Don thought it was better than the American side. <laughs> he, he's probably right. I mean, the towns on the Canada side when you're Niagara Falls. No offense, Sue. I know Sue grew up in Niagara Falls, uh, <laughs> but uh, the it, the can the Canada side is, is is lovely. So, as someone who yeah. who lived have lived very close by, so and we had some great times at. Uh, let's see, who was that? Uh, who sang Coal Miner's Daughter? It was uh, Loretta. It was a Loretta Lynn, and then her daughter, Crystal Gale. That's her name. Crystal she had a she had a couple of theaters that we uh, that we played at and did luau oh. luau things on the road. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it was it was really cool. Actually, great time. Great time in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, sure. You know, well, a lot of a lot of folks from the from the islands, you know, up there. So, yeah. And the. Uh, we went to uh, Emerald uh, Queen uh, Queen. Uh, what was it? Queen Casino in oh, yeah. uh, the Tacoma, yeah. and the Emerald Queen, and uh, that's the Puyallup tribe, and that's the one where <laughs> the uh, chief of the Puyallups thought he was Sinatra. So we had to bring him up on stage and have him sing Sinatra songs with us. You know, it was, it was cute. Yeah, it's a and beautiful. Uh, a, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say Don gave him a uh, a really cool uh, outrigger canoe paddle, and he gave Don an Indian uh, canoe paddle uh, you know, from uh, from that area. Yeah, it was really nice. Nice exchange. Beautiful. They just did a huge renovation. A friend of mine's the the administrator. A friend of mine's dad is the administrator for the Puyallup tribe, and uh, he just oversaw oh, cool. a big uh, a big renovation of the casino. It's beautiful. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, we're getting close to time. Do you want to take us out with Quiet Village since you teased it? Well, you well, time? <laughs> sure. All right. Absolutely. Let's do it. I guess it doesn't matter if we go over a minute. We'll just go over a minute. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> All right. So this used to open up the Don Ho show when I was with Don. <laughs>
chirp, chirp. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Dennis. Thank you oh. for taking uh, some time this evening. Uh, I know uh, we all learned a whole lot more uh, about you and uh, it was really a joy. So thank you. Well, for... thank you for having me. And thank, I'm glad everybody that decided to stay here. Hi, guys. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to end the recording.